Welcome to Servants of the Lord Ministries. My name is Dr. Keith Jenkins. I'm the International Coordinator for Servants of the Lord Ministries. Before I start my message today, let me share with you the commission of the ministry that God gave to Joseph Hedgecock, the founder of Servants of the Lord Ministries, many years ago. The Lord said to him, I have children in every nation, and you have brothers and sisters whose hearts are crying out to me. They've sought me for ministry, blessings and gifts. I've given them those things, and it's blessed them. But there's a part of their spirit that it never fulfilled, that is reserved for an intimate relationship with me. Now their hearts are crying out to me just for me. That is who I'm sending you to, because I don't want them to take the years it took you to get to me, because there was no one to show you how at the time. Servants of the Lord Ministries is a teaching and training ministry sent to the body of Christ to reach people with a heart after God. This message is for those who want to get to know Him, grow up in Him, and be ready for His appearing. Today I'm speaking about being reconciled with God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21. For we have made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The word reconciled in Strong's is number 2644. It comes from some other words which means to change mutually. That is figuratively to compound a difference or reconcile. Any two parties in a relationship not reconciled still have issues outstanding. The Corinthians were born again, moving in the gifts of the Spirit, but they were not reconciled to God. They had allowed sin to come in between them and their relationship with God, hindering them from being made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 19 to 24. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 16. I'm starting in verse 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. Verse 20, All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with an holy kiss. Verse 21, The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. Verse 22, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Verse 23, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Verse 24, my love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 22 says, if anyone does not love the Lord, does not have a friendly affection for him, and is not kindly disposed toward him, he shall be accursed. Our Lord will come. Maranatha. If Jesus is not your first love, then you are venerating something more than God. If you love the Lord, you do not let anything easily get between you and your relationship with God. In one of the first messages where I heard Joseph Hitchcock speak, the author of the book, My Sheep Hear My Voice, he made this statement. Nothing can separate us from his love. But there is something that can separate you from a close, intimate relationship with God. And that is your personal sin. For you to be an ambassador for God, you cannot have iniquity in your life. John said in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. This is 1 John chapter 2. I'm reading verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You might love the Lord, but if he is your first love, then you will not allow yourself to drift out of his presence. Those who love him are quick to confess their sin because he is their first love. We read in Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. This is in the book of Isaiah 59. I'm starting in verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. In the Living Bible, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Listen now, the Lord isn't too weak to save you, and he isn't getting deaf. He can hear you when you call, but the trouble is that your sins have cut you off from God. Because of sin, he has turned his face away from you and will not listen any more. Departing from the truth separates you from God. His face is always looking towards his children to provide for them when he is Lord. When his face is turned away, he will not hear your voice crying out for blessings. To be reconciled, your iniquities and sins have to be removed. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. This is in the book of Romans chapter 8, starting verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The word enmity in Strong's is number 2189. It's the feminine word of another word meaning hostility, by implication, a reason for opposition, enmity or hatred. God is never the problem. The devil is never the problem either. The carnal mind is the problem because it is hostile and opposed to God with a strong hatred. You should have agreed at salvation that he is going to be your Lord and Master and for God to deliver, provide, and protect you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1, I'm reading to verse 14. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Verse 5. But with many of them, God was not pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent. We should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Verse 7. Neither be idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, that people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Verse 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Verse 12. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you 
but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. The Jews sinned because they were still trying to serve two masters after they came out of Egypt, even though they were baptized. According to Paul, God is faithful. Also, you will never be tempted to a level that you are not able to handle. Just stay in the Spirit and keep listening to His voice to hear the way of escape. Keep your thoughts under control so you do not end up listening to just earthly wisdom again. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verses 29 to 32. This is in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, starting in verse 29. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. Verse 30. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that ye have need of these things. Verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, Luke 12, 29 says, And you do not seek by meditating and reasoning to inquire into what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious, troubled mind, unsettled, excited, worried, and in suspense. God can give you the kingdom. If your mind is troubled or anxious, you cannot function as his ambassador. In ordinary situations, you need the mind of Christ. In all situations, Jesus never consulted his own will. You will be overcome by basic temptations if small decisions are not processed spiritually, and the consequences escalate. Even if you do not know what to do, ask the Lord what not to do in each situation. The answer to what not to do will help you see a way forward based on the options remaining. Do not consult your mind, but use the witness of the Spirit instead. You must have no opinions and deny yourself to hear His voice and live in victory. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 3, I'm reading. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 starting in verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. For more information on how to develop a love relationship with God, please read the book How Love Grows by Joseph Hedgecock. If you can operate in the power of God, but not love in complicated situations under pressure, your life is a sounding gong, or at best a tinkling cymbal, calling Jesus Lord. You might function in the gifts of the Spirit, learn songs set to some soothing or nice sounding music, that actually quenches the conviction you really need for the sake of personal holiness. The Corinthians had lost their first love. They were not seeking righteousness to maintain the presence of God in humble circumstances. Instead, they were satisfied with the presence of God manifesting through ministry and followed a counterfeit version without making Jesus Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verses 22 and 23. This is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, I'm reading verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Those who measure their spiritual temperature on times of praise and worship or ministry are in great danger. 
Many know how to humble themselves and let him use them for the sake of the ministry and then go back to the flesh. We read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 4 to verse 11. I'm reading Isaiah, chapter 6, starting in verse 4. And the posts of the door moved as the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Verse 7. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Verse 9. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see Ye indeed, but perceive not. Verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Verse 11. Then said I, the Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. The word undone in Strong's is number 1820, a primitive root, to be dumb or silent, hence to fail or perish, means to destroy or cease, to be cut down or cut off, to be destroyed or be brought to silence or be undone completely. Instead of being healed through repentance from dead works, the last generation have become fat on corrupted teachings of prosperity and blessings in the church through false prophets. Isaiah was ready to go again to the lost sheep of Israel and tell them the truth. He cried out for mercy when he saw the posts of the door shaking and what was inside about to come out. He was convicted that his lips were unclean, calling him Lord without being obedient. James said in James chapter 3 verses 6 to 15, this is in the book of James chapter 3, I'm reading verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and is it set on fire of hell. Verse 7. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and have been tamed of mankind. Verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. Verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Verse 11. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Verse 12. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield still water and fresh. Verse 13. Who is a wise man and endue with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Verse 14. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, lie not against the truth. Verse 15. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. There are reasons for the impure words that come out of your mouth. 
use worldly wisdom for a limited period of time because it's devilish and God has his own wisdom. Those serving two masters prefer earthly wisdom for the sake of their flesh and earthly gain, but that leads to envying and strife. Godly wisdom is gained from a life dedicated to God, being the servant of all on the narrow way. With godly wisdom, you will not become spiritually sluggish. In the Living Bible, Isaiah 6, verses 10 and 11 says, Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn again and be healed. Then said I, Lo, how long? And he answered, Until the cities lie waste without inhabitant, houses without man, and the land is utterly desolate. Judgment and fire is all that is left for God's people when church leaders tell his people what they want to hear. They are supposed to be watchmen who can warn the people that they are on a way that seems right. We all have the Holy Spirit, so you do not have to accept or believe lies taught today in the church contrary to the truth. Jesus said in John chapter 3 verses 17 to 21. This is John's Gospel chapter 3 and reading verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse 20. For every one that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Verse 21. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, and that they are wrought in God. Those who believe lies for the sake of their flesh are condemned already, protecting and serving their own interests. They are venerating something more than God, making it an idol in their own lives. They will not allow God's word to manifest through his precious promises, living by faith on the narrow way. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. This is 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. In these last days, Paul said many will listen to another voice because they are drawn away by demonic forces through the lust of their own flesh. Those who are going away that seems right now need to see. They're serving the lust of the flesh. If they can see they're serving sin, then they have a chance to repent and get ready for his appearing. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. This is Philippians chapter 3. I'm reading verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as ye have us, for an example. Verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. In a good church, you should hear messages on how to live by faith on the narrow way. God's people can still perish if they continue in sin and serve the lusts of the flesh. Enemies of the cross of Christ oppose the need to ask God everything, and prefer to use their minds to make decisions for the sake of their flesh. They will not deny themselves and take up their cross daily as a way of life. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he's a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous, moral, and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. You can welcome Jesus as your saviour, a talisman, political leader, like a pastor of a modern church. However, if your life does not change, you've not made him Lord. You should stop using your mind to understand the things of God and seek his righteousness. We read in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. This is in John's Gospel, chapter 1, I read verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that comes into the world. Verse 10. And he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Which are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Those who accept Jesus as Lord receive the Holy Spirit so they can live in the light, function with him in control, and become sons of God. The Holy Spirit is not just a spiritual experience, but a lifeline for those born of God who want to function like Christ and not be conformed to this world. Those who have received Jesus as Lord and Master know they must hear, trust and obey to save themselves from making wrong decisions daily and falling for the way that seems right. Paul was speaking about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 5 verses 8 and 9. This is in Hebrews chapter 5, and read verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. You have to be willing to suffer for righteousness' sake. By ignoring conviction for the sake of your flesh, you will not be ready for his appearing. There are many things to change, but only change what he reveals through repentance, through conviction. You are alerted to what needs to be changed first. You should believe that what God started in you through conviction, he will finish. Jesus is still the author of your salvation. If you are departing from the iniquity God reveals using grace and truth, we read in John chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. This is John's Gospel, chapter 1, starting in verse 16. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. There is now no condemnation in Christ. So you can learn and get to the root of sin. Jesus brought grace and truth. He did not bring grace for you to go on sinning and ignore conviction. With the grace and truth, you can get to the root of sin if you want to change. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 3. This is Philippians chapter 3. I'm reading verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. The truth gets corrupted when you pass godly information through the carnal mind. Paul had no confidence in the flesh. You might be able to do something for the sake of your flesh and get grace. However, if you do not deny yourself and take up your cross daily to follow Christ, you will fall asleep spiritually and not finish your race. We read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 18 to 26. This is in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 1, starting in verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. 
Verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Verse 21. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it. But now, murderers. Verse 22. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Verse 23. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves gifts and follows after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. Verse 24. Therefore says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. Verse 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. Verse 26. And I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counsellors as at the beginning. Afterwards thou shalt be called the city of righteousness the faithful city. All mankind was separated from God through sin in the beginning, and he reached out to his own people first to purge them. God declares the end from the beginning, and he can put your life back on the path of righteousness. God does not depart from truth, and he does not lie. He is consistent in his response to sin and iniquity. We read in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. This is in the book of Acts, chapter 10, and reading verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Verse 35. But in every nation, he that fears him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Do not deceive yourself. God has no favors. If someone is making better progress spiritually than you, then that person is doing what is necessary to follow Christ. The outcome of our lives now depends on us. If you repent of the warnings and embrace conviction, you will be reconciled to God based on His plan for your life. Save yourselves from this wicked and corrupt generation by denying yourself. Choose to live by faith. Rejoice. And let him direct you, especially in a sudden change of circumstances or a standard of living that forces you to acknowledge God in all your ways. Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 8. This is in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 5. Trust in the law with all thine heart and lean not to thine understanding. Verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes, and fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Verse 8. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. You are justified by your faith in God, and the grace he provides for you, with the corrections he makes with Jesus in charge. Those who are wise in their own eyes have already departed from the faith. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 10 to 12. This is 1 Timothy chapter 6, I'm reading verse 10. But the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, Love, patience, meekness. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. The devil can only deceive those who want to be deceived, and make decisions with their mind for the sake of earthly gain. The devil has nothing eternal to offer you, and will perish in the lake of eternal fire. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 to 19. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading verse 18. 
and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Paul insisted that all things are of God. Those reconciled to God by hearing him all the time know the right response in every situation. For you to get out of Christ, then you have to take over the Lordship and have decided you know better than God. The ministry of reconciliation is more than just a powerful prayer to remove an addiction or a bad habit. You are supposed to be reconciled to God and help others that do not believe in the sinless life. God knows you need equality with him, just to be his ambassador. By abiding in Christ, your life will be changing automatically. The plan for you to be righteous depends on you. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 6 to 9. This is Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading verse 6. But one in the certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Verse 7. Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. God is very mindful of man, as he created him to rule as his representatives. Mankind is the height of God's creation and not designed to function independently from him. Through a love relationship, you can have all your needs met and serve without being overcome. Jesus overcame to do the will of God, and we do not need to fear death or suffering. With your connection to God through the Holy Spirit, you have an opportunity to get ready for his appearing and serve now. Those following Christ have taken their God-ordained role in God's kingdom already with the right priorities. God has not changed his mind about your calling and what will happen next. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 to 6. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2 starting in verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. Verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour. Verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. Verse 6 who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The priority for everyone, including leaders, is repentance. He is Lord, and when he came, the priority was grace and truth, so that through conviction, everyone with a heart after God could have a chance of being completely reconciled to God. Jesus came, and he did not kick out the Romans or silence the religious leaders. There was no change of plan when Christ died. Jesus is 100% God and 100% man in order to be the mediator between God and man. Now there is no excuse for not following Christ daily, disobeying or resisting conviction. We read in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10. This is Hebrews chapter 2 and reading verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. 
Christ is our example of how to rule on this earth. He functioned perfectly, without trying to save himself from suffering, as he would have sinned. He was like us in every way and had no advantage. Now your life needs to follow his example, and you will not sin either. John said in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. This is 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. In the book, Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 3, on spiritual maturity, in Chapter 3, on measuring your maturity, on page 37, Joseph Hedgecock writes, You are not perfect when you are spiritually mature, but you are consistent. With maturity, you may get out of the Spirit for a short time, but you do not stay out. When you have dealt with your fleshly hindrances, being tempted by them will be a rare exception. Repent as soon as the Spirit shows you that you are in the flesh. You are reconciled to God quickly. You do not let Satan have additional access by postponing your repentance or falling into condemnation. The old nature does not completely disappear because you live in a natural body. But when you are mature, it does not move you away from the Lord easily. An extraordinary amount of pressure can cause sin that is dormant to manifest in anyone following Christ. The pressure reveals the level of repentance in that area is not deep enough. Your repentance has to be tested so you can see what sort of foundation has been laid. If the proper foundation has been laid, then when the pressure or the trial comes, you will not sin. James said in James chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. This is in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse 10. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. Verse 11. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace and the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Those who are in humble circumstances have an advantage. Those who are rich and comfortable have no pressure on them personally. You are supposed to have periods of time when there is no pressure. This is a time to learn and seek God for his commands and instructions. David said in the Psalms 37 and verse 1. This is in the Psalms chapter 37 and reading verse 1. A Psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. No Webster in 1828 in his dictionary defined iniquity as a particular deviation from rectitude, a sin or crime, wickedness, or any act of injustice. No Webster in 1828 in his dictionary defined rectitude as immorality, rightness of principle, or practice uprightness of mind, exact conformity to truth, or to the rules prescribed for moral conduct, either by divine or human laws. Rectitude of mind is the disposition to act in conformity to any known standard of right, truth, or justice. Rectitude of conduct is the actual conformity to such standard. Perfect rectitude belongs only to the supreme being. The more nearly the rectitude of men approaches to the standard of the divine law, the more exalted and dignified is their character. Want of rectitude is not only sinful but debasing. Iniquity is departing from the truth and revelation you should have received since your salvation. 
You should have been convicted many times that without Jesus as Lord, you will sin. Iniquity is departing from the truth you know and not done ignorantly. Iniquity is the mother of all sin because it comes from using your own mind to decide what is right and what is wrong based on limited knowledge. Once you believe one lie, then you have to believe more lies to defend the lies that you believed earlier. Webster also said, There is sublimity in conscious rectitude in comparison with which the treasures of earth are not worth naming. Being led by the Spirit is a beautiful feeling of extreme good. Since you are born again, it's not easy to walk in darkness. You have to give up the joy of the Lord from being in his presence. You have to choose the short-term peace of the world instead, just so you can do what you want. You'll become like the prodigal son, seeking worldly pleasures, and not experience his love personally for you. God never forsakes you, but you forsake him by not following Christ. For you to sin then, you have to turn your back on all that God has provided through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for him to direct your life as Lord by the Spirit. Jesus said in Matthew 7 verses 17 to 21. This is Matthew's Gospel chapter 7. I'm starting verse 17. Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20. Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. By grace, through faith, you get forgiveness if you confess your sins. If you do not confess, you will not be forgiven now or in eternity. Sin is a bad fruit. At the root of sin, you chose not to trust God for the sake of your flesh. You can repent of the immediate reasons that cause your sin to manifest. This is not deep repentance either. Shallow repentance will only have the effect of pruning the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is feeding the bad fruit. The devil tries to make you comfortable in this world with the wrong kind of righteousness so that the bad fruit never manifests as otherwise you might repent deeply and wake up. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 34. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 I'm reading verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. In the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 34 says, Awake from your drunken stupor and return to sober sense and your right minds and sin no more. For some of you have not the knowledge of God. You are utterly and willfully and disgracefully ignorant and continue to be so lacking in the sense of God's presence and all true knowledge of him. I say this to your shame. When convicted, those who love him respond immediately to the knowledge God is giving them through conviction. Make a note of your sin that the Holy Spirit reveals to you personally. Those who are reconciled to God use a sin list to keep a record of the revelation and steps they have taken to repent. Those asleep in the church are drunk, according to Paul, and do not welcome conviction and strong messages. Instead, they want a systematic approach to the things of God for the sake of their own flesh, feeding their own ideas with theories about righteousness, by believing lies about the resurrection not taking place. The Corinthians were willfully and disgracefully ignorant for the sake of their flesh. One reason the church is not growing today is because its leaders are using their minds trying to come to the truth. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, 
This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm reading verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Paul's teaching produced conviction so everyone that was spiritual could understand what they needed to work on next, all at the same time, even when they were all at different levels of maturity. Paul was not interested in making it easier for people using their minds to understand anything, as this would feed the flesh. In every church he taught his ways in Christ so that people could follow his example and seek the lessons learned through conviction under pressure on the narrow way. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3 verses 14 to 19. This is in the book of Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou would be cold or hot. Verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salva, that thou mayest see. Verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Carnal believers pray for God to change their circumstance with his power and authority for the sake of their flesh. They are blind to the fact that they need to be reconciled to God. They will not worship him at the throne of his wisdom. In your desire for something in this world, you will listen to your own self-righteousness rather than seek righteousness because you love this world. Those who are carnal do not see the need to ask on everything. They resist the grieving of the Holy Spirit for the sake of their flesh. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 and 32. This is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, and reading verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? Verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. You should stop consulting your mind since you came to Christ for food and clothes. Because you have a Heavenly Father. Your priorities change. If you believe, then you will spend time seeking His kingdom and His righteousness in challenging situations instead. You have to repent of seeking temporal things and not just say sorry each time. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 verses 5 and 6, This is in the book of Romans, chapter 8. I'm reading verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In the book, The Guilted Prison, Revised Edition, in chapter 3, on unseen chains, on page 29, Joseph Edgecott writes, When you habitually sin and yield to the flesh, satanic spirits gain access. Habitual sin in specific areas sends a signal to Satan. He sees your rebellion against God in specific areas. He then sends demonic spirits associated with your sins to entrap you. These spirits amplify the lust of your flesh and seduce you with deception. They tempt you to resist the work of the spirit that would bring you to repentance. In a sense, you move into a maximum security prison because satanic spirits control you. They intensify your bondage. If you want to be free, you must fight against the flesh 
and the satanic spirits that are attached to specific sins. One example of this would be someone who is addicted to alcohol or drugs. The devil also gains access to amplify rebellion, fear, anger, resentment, bitterness, depression, oppression, and many other sins. Today's addictions to electronic devices and social media are also influenced by him. If you're not overtly rebellious, but try to walk with God in spiritualized flesh, Satan will minister religious spirits to you. He will bind you with erroneous church doctrines, religious methods, and self-righteousness. You will follow the letter of the law instead of the leading of the Spirit, and you'll be quick to judge others and condemn yourself. In the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, but all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation, that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. The word reconciled also means harmony. You can also be at harmony with this word, through Jesus making all the decisions. God wants you to enjoy all things, but not before it's time. God can use everything to bring us back to God. You cannot be in harmony with God if you're still acting independently of God. Through the peace of God being disturbed, you will sense evil and the danger of temptation approaching. In the Living Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 19 says, All these new things are from God, who brought us back to himself through what Christ Jesus did. And God has given us the privilege of urging everyone to come into his favor and be reconciled to him. For God was in Christ, restoring the world to himself, no longer counting men's sins against them, but blotting them out. This is a wonderful message. He has given us to tell others. Now everything is new by making Jesus functional Lord of your life. Even though the world is passing away, God can use humble circumstances for you to grow spiritually. Through physical weakness, you can learn a greater dependence on him and get the strength you need through your relationship with God. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 29, this is Romans chapter 8. I'm reading verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray, for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Man was created in the image of God, and he was only good until he was separated from God through sin. Jesus showed us the way man was supposed to function on the earth as a living sacrifice. He came to die, but he had to qualify to die on that cross first to be the perfect sacrifice. You came to rule and reign since the kingdom of God has been here for 2,000 years. In practice, you have to qualify to rule and reign with Christ for a 1,000 years with God's righteousness in humble circumstances. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. This is Romans chapter 12, starting in verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. 
and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Make use of God's superior ways, through faith, hearing and obeying his voice, and your carnal mind will be transformed. You will also be able to help others consistently using their minds, trying to understand the things of God. Good fruit in your life will prove that you are doing what is right in each situation. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30 this is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, and read verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When you are doing the will of God, your yoke is easy, and the burden is light. By doing what is right or the perfect will of God, His anointing will come upon you to enable you to do what you are doing. John said in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27, But the anointing which you have received of Him abides in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even... As it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Without making Jesus Lord, you cannot help anyone else. The devil gets access when you stop trusting God, take over the Lordship and take matters into your own hands. Under a certain level of pressure, you might not sin. Jesus is our advocate in heaven and we submit to him. He endured the maximum pressure and did not sin. However, we may not be required to endure so much. He decides. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24 to 27. I'm reading the book of Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Verse 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. If the pressure gets too much, sin manifests, but you get to see your sin early and repent. God's ways are not man's ways. The final judgment is coming, when there will be no opportunity to repent any more. Peter said in Second Peter chapter three, verses nine and reading to verse fourteen. This is Second Peter chapter three, starting in verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Verse 12. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent 
that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. You are called and chosen to be changed by truth and conviction in complicated situations, to be a people without spot and wrinkle. Sin is anything contrary to God's perfect will for your life in thought, purpose and action. Now is the time to repent. James said in James chapter 1 verses 13 to 18. This is James chapter 1. I'm reading verse 13. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempt he any man. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Verse 15, then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Verse 16, do not err, my beloved brethren. Verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, and with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. God allows a little bit of discomfort for those who are deceiving themselves. God's grace is sufficient always. God loves you, but he also wants you to grow up spiritually. If you keep consulting your carnal mind and take over the lordship, then you will not be ready for his appearing. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34, this is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, and read verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You should be seeking righteousness in all your relationship with everyone, and not change your circumstances until you have learned the lessons you need to learn. There are no set rules. When others mistreat you or someone is harsh, these are opportunities to love your enemies if you are on fire for God. You will even pray for God to send them again and again until you learn the lesson God intended. Our righteousness is not based on the law, but the right godly response. He decides in complicated and difficult circumstances. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 20, this is Matthew's gospel chapter 5 and reading verse 20, for I say unto you that except our, your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. Your righteousness shall exceed any religious standards and laws in this world. When you seek righteousness in complicated situations, do not come out of Christ. You are complete in Christ, and God will provide for your needs. If you always complain when things get difficult or make excuses, you are not learning from your mistakes. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 16. This is Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13. For it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Verse 15. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Verse 16, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. If the pressure has caused you to complain, then make a note, because with God all things are possible. He makes a way to stand under the pressure. God is at work to perform his will in the situation, but not when you take matters into your own hands. You should be letting God work on anything that does not look like Christ in thought, purpose, or action. James said in James chapter 4, verses 1 to 4. This is in the book of James chapter 4. I'm reading verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts 
that war in your members? Verse 2. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. Verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. For you to sin, you have to use your carnal mind, stop trusting God, to save you in complicated situations and not follow his instructions by hearing his voice. James says, the war with sin starts on the inside. Before you sin, you have to take over the lordship and depart from the truth. You started the war choosing to deceive yourself for the sake of your flesh. If you're not reconciled to God, you have committed spiritual adultery. We read in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 5 to 7. This is John's Gospel, chapter 14, and verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Verse 6. And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Verse 7. If you have not known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But the church is seeking a righteousness that allows them to do what they want when they want. Some create such rules and doctrines because they love this world. If you are separated again and again from God, you have the wrong priorities. Those who refuse to listen to a wrong voice will give the good confession that God will provide through his kingdom, his way. John said in 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. This is 1 John chapter 4, I'm reading verse 15. Whosoever therefore shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwells in him, and he in God. Verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. It's easy to walk with God when you know he loves you. You will confess that Jesus is Lord in many situations. He provides for you as you abide. The knowledge you need every day is his commands, so you don't sin. You should keep a notebook of any conviction that you experience. The notebook should include at least the following sections for further study. Number one, conviction. Number two, all things passing away. And number three, new things coming as a result of repentance. He will not force you to believe his ways are better than yours. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. Those who are overcoming sin, overcome by faith using God's answers, not just trying harder. Use the notebook to record the times when you get angry and get in the flesh. Times when you sin will help you identify lies you believe for the sake of your flesh. The victory is listening to God and getting the godly wisdom you need following Christ. Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, And verse 13, this is in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, and reading verse 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. Liberty is not a license to do what you want, when you want, based on a knowledge of right and wrong. If you want God to use you mightily, then you have to use the grace of God properly and stop using your own knowledge of right and wrong to serve in every situation. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. This is Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Verse 20. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The kingdom of God is here, 
now and all the precious promises of God to help us serve. Man was created and cut off and not found his way back because the common mind does not want to serve. This is the problem. Deny yourself to stop these corrupting influences and then see how God supplies your needs according to his riches. We read in Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may as freely eat. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Knowledge is power for those who are still conformed to this world, because they do not know God. You were set free to be a servant and seek God's righteousness. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 verses 11 to 13. This is in the book of Romans chapter 8 and reading verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Verse 13. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Just because you are born again does not mean you will not perish or die. You must repent and seek God's perfect will to be part of His government. You cannot do this with your carnal, natural mind. If you want to serve God, you have to hear His voice. Jesus said in John chapter 10, Verses 27 and 28. This is John's Gospel, chapter 10. I'm reading verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. If you want to hear, get to know and follow Jesus, then I can recommend this book, My Sheep Hear My Voice by Joseph Hedgecock. If you want to make a fresh start and get on the narrow path, sow in the Spirit daily, experience full salvation and freedom through regular repentance, then I can recommend the book Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 1, Foundations of Spiritual Maturity by Joseph Hedgecock. If you want to grow up spiritually and not be earthly minded and come to maturity, then I can recommend the book Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 2, Growing Up Spiritually by Joseph Hedgecock. Do not accept a counterfeit version of Christianity based on religious words where you do not have to deny yourself daily and trust God. If you know that you have resisted the truth and want to know why, then I can recommend the book The Guilty Prison, Revised Edition by Joseph Hedgecock. I've shared with you how to be reconciled to God. There is nothing in this world that will hinder you from that close relationship with Him except your sin. That can be in situations that you go through every day, you get angry, you sin, and that sin is what is destroying your life. And some of those sins occur again and again. And I urge you, through this message to make a note of those sins so you can remove them and purge yourself and that God can use you in many, many situations for all the kinds of tasks he wants to use you. You will see this happening in your life. You will see signs that God is using you and his power is coming upon you to enable you to do that work. There is nothing more rewarding than pleasing the Father. I pray for you right now. I pray that you will reconcile yourself to God. Those things of earthly gain and the things of this world, don't let them steal your joy, your peace, and a wonderful relationship with God. Father, I'm praying for everyone listening right now to this message that you have touched their heart, you have shown them things in this message where they have committed spiritual adultery. And I'm praying for them right now that they will come to repentance, not just 
shallow repentance, but deep repentance, so they can finish their race in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. You can find a summary of the scriptures used in today's message below the video, either written out or via link to a website. Our contact details will follow at the end of this message. God bless you and thank you for listening.